Our reading this morning uh, will come from the Corinthians, but first let us center ourselves in prayer as we prepare to hear God's word for us this morning. Let us be in silent prayer. Amen. Our lesson is from the epistles this morning from 1 Corinthians 12, 4 through 11. And Joe will do one more. And Paul is writing to a very, very diverse congregation in Corinth. And he says, Now, concerning spiritual matters, I do not want you to be ignorant. There are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same spirit, to another faith by the same spirit, to another gifts of healing by the one spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the discernment of spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, and to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same spirit who allots to each one individually, just as the Spirit chooses. This is the word of God this morning for the people of God. Be God. Please be seated. So Paul is writing to a very, very, very diverse congregation. Corinth was a big, big city and people from all over lived there. There were Jews and Greeks, slaves and free, male and female, rich and poor, what they would call white collar workers and blue collar workers. Everyone in this church together. Jews who had been Jews all their lives, New Christians who had, had no God or several gods or interesting gods as we would look at them, idols, all now in the same church, trying to figure out how to make that work together. Uh, kind of like Epworth in so many ways, this diverse group of people who've come from many backgrounds, trying to figure out how to best be the church that God called them to be. And so he comes to them and says, you know, I'm not sure you quite understand spiritual matters. And I don't want you to be ignorant about that. Now, I like the word ignorant. But it doesn't mean stupid. What it means is not knowing or misknowing. And he says, I don't want you to not know lest you fall. Lest, because you're not understanding what spiritual things are, causes you in some way to sin and build a wall between you and God or between someone else and God. So I really want you to understand what it means to be spiritual. I'm thinking they probably weren't that different from our society. We have people who are spiritual. And, and I don't mean to knock that, but we often tend to use the word spiritual having to do with our spirit, having to do with us, that part of us that isn't tangible, that spirit. And we think of spiritual things of just things that aren't tangible. And I think Paul is, is saying the Corinthians were as well. They weren't understanding that spiritual is very, very, very specific 
to the Spirit of God. Spiritual things don't have to do with our spirit, but with the Spirit of God. Spiritual things, I love this word, pneumaticos, pneumaticos. That's the Greek word for spiritual things. Pneuma, pneumonia, pneuma, P-N-E-U-M-O-M-A, pneuma. And it was very specifically breath, specifically the breath of God. Spiritual things are those things that we are given for the common good through the breath of God. Those are the gifts of the Spirit. Those are the manifestations of the Spirit, was another way that Paul put it. And a manifestation is a representation. We are given, like I told the children, the characteristics of God in different measure, in different doses, in different ways, so that we can be God's actors here on earth. We are given talent, no, no doubt about that. And God gives us those, and we use those for the betterment of the world. But those aren't spiritual gifts. Spiritual gifts are other than that. And yes, we're supposed to use our talents well and develop them and use them for God's glory. And whether we are playing football or we are playing a keyboard, when we have a talent, a strength, God expects us to develop that and use it. But in addition to those are these spiritual things, these pneumaticos these characteristics of God. And I suppose God plays football. I, I not really thought about that. But I don't think that's what a spiritual gift is. When we think of the qualities of God, the love of God, the nurturing of God, the healing God gives, all these that Paul listed in this letter and more, this isn't an exhaustive list. You know, people have tried to say, we either have these gifts or we have nothing. If we don't have one of these gifts, we're not visited by the Holy Spirit. Pshaw, pshaw, pshaw. Now, this is just, Paul, I mean, in, no more could Paul list all the gifts of the Spirit than we could get a chalkboard and list the gifts of God, the characteristics of God. God cannot fit on a chalkboard or a whiteboard. God cannot fit on the walls of this building, we could not list all the descriptors, all the characteristics of God. God is that big. And that's how many the gifts of the Spirit are. And God gives each of us many of those. And then God says, I want to use them, want you to use them for the kingdom. But we can't just go about using them. I love the last verse. All these gifts are activated by one spirit. Just having them isn't enough. They have to be activated by the spirit. Not too long ago, I lost the most important thing in my life. My ATM debit card. It was gone, and I had to get another. And if my account had been open at a Bank of America in Oklahoma, or any place other than the state it was opened in, I could have just walked into the nearest branch, and they could have gotten me a card very quickly. But somehow, some way, the strange state of California is slightly disconnected from the Bank of America everywhere else, and so it had to come from California. And I waited and waited, and finally the new card with, unfortunately, the old picture came to my address. <laughs> if you saw the picture, you'd know how old my Bank of America account is. Anyway, so it came in the mail, and I took it off and was ready to use it. But wait, 
What did I have to do first? Activate it. Aha. The gift was no good until I called the number and connected my card to the magical, mystical, electronic world. And then I could use it. But nearly every place I need to use it, I still have to either punch in a little special number or punch in my zip code. I still have to every time connect it to that world. You go, you know where I'm going. Okay. For our spiritual gifts to work, we have to connect them to that magical, mystical, spiritual, Numa world. And the best way, in fact, I think probably one of the only ways to do that is through as little Abby would go. Let's pray. Through prayer. Through prayer, we open ourselves up. The spirit in us connects with that magical, mystical spirit of God. And the gifts that we have are activated. And if we take the time before we go out into the world to connect each time, then those gifts that we have will not be used just for ourselves, but we will be more likely to use them connected to the Spirit. We have gifts that come and go and flow as the community needs. At this point in time, I believe one of my spiritual gifts is doing what I'm doing now, is preaching. I think I'm pretty good at it, but I'm only good at it when I do two things. One is do my work of developing it every week. Through prayer, through reading book after book, section after section, going online to sites and compiling lots of pages. There are weeks when I have about 20 pages worth of notes. And if you've ever seen my sermon notes, this is what I have up here this morning. <laughs> These are my sermon notes for today. So from 20 pages, probably by Wednesday, by this morning I've got that much. That's what my work is. But I get to this much Sunday morning by activating heavy time. By activating heavy time. By saying, gracious God, take over. Take over my mouth. Take over that tongue of mine. Take over my mind. Take over my ears so that I can see my, no, that would be good. <laughs> I do that all the time. My ears that I can hear, my eyes that I can see what is needed. Let me say the word that you would have me say this morning. And dear gracious God, when I don't do that because I don't, let each one hear what he or she needs to hear anyway. Amen. And that is when someone comes up to me after worship and says, what a great sermon. It spoke to me and blah, blah, blah. And I'm thinking, you know, I don't remember saying anything like what that person just said. But thank you, God. The Spirit activated whatever needed to be activated. But I'm not the only one with pneumaticon. God gives to everyone gifts. Gifts that if you say, gracious God, open my eyes and my ears and control my mouth and tongue for the good of your world today, then as you meet someone at work, as you stand in line, an endless line with what doesn't seem to be like the most intelligent clerk in the world, you will use what God has given you for kindness for loving, for a healing word to someone, somehow. 
We'll never know how healing it is to say, oh, look, you've only got a few items. Go ahead. Or your child is screaming. You need to go through the line first. Or, 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 or. If we activate those gifts, that paradise that God created will be ever more present. And the only one who can activate the gifts that you've been given is you through your connection with the Spirit. As we go to prayer this morning, I would ask you, which gifts have you activated today? And which gifts are still in the envelope waiting to be peeled off and activated. Let's be in prayer.